we were talking about the parallelism between water dance and contact improvisation and um, for me the first idea that's like struck me or that I was very impressed is to work uh, be practicing with two of the basic fears of humankind, like to stop breathing in water mm -hmm. and to fall in contact. Entonces yo me imaginaba estas diferencias, eh, pero paralelismos entre la danza en agua y la improvisación de contacto de los dos miedos más grandes del ser humano, ¿no? Caer en la improvisación de contacto y no respirar en el agua. So, um, I would like to ask you, yeah, about time and space in water. I've been hearing these concepts and principles around touch and movement. And there's this diving, mammalian diving reflex happening in the water. No? And so the breath and the heart beats much slower and there's like a real physiological change just by spreading some water in our faces. Um, so I was wondering for you both that I'm with Sergio and Janeta here and with this question I would like for you to also introduce a little bit of yourselves for this part of the interview. Oria, yeah, how do you experience around what I'm talking about, like uh, these parallelisms and this nurturing or not between practices? Entonces me gustaría que se introdujeran y también pudieran hablar un poco de este paralelismo con esto que acabo como de, de introducir, ¿no? Y cómo se, se nutren. That I've been hearing uh, in the last interview that you did some of this, but yeah, how do you perceive time and space in, in the water, ¿no? And con, contrast in land, in contact impro, so como experimento el tiempo y el espacio. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting, this subject. The truth is, I I feel quite um, in time and space, in the water. Maybe more in time. I don't feel that I lose time. Like, I'm lost of the quality of time. I think even it more happens for me on the land. Because in the land, I'm bringing this state by myself. And not the water it makes that, but I'm I'm putting myself into the state of s of slowing down or like making attention on different different level. Mm. And the space, it's I think this kinesphere it's so important in the water. Uh, that it's always it's always with me this sphere, this kinesphere of mine. So I'm always connected to it, to it and I'm the center a little bit of my own perception because there's no point of reference. Yes, about time and space, I'm not sure. Mm. Maybe the space is more clear for me, the difference that I feel more, uh, I think I feel more mm, that we are sharing a, a space in the dance, in the water. Mm -hmm. um, maybe in the land I'm more aware about my space, because it's my weight, it's my center, it's my possibilities. But in the l water I feel that I need to connect with the other body to move in, in connection and related with that. No, because it's more interesting. So I think the space is kind of more open. I have this sensation now thinking about that. It's bigger in the water. Mm. Hmm. And about time, I don't know, something about the breath. Um, and the speed, no? If maybe there are, I don't know, I'm not sure. I have more experience in land. The different rhythms, the different speed of can change the time for me mm. during the dance. But in the water, I don't have this this uh, range, mm. very big. Like, they are not very, very, very fast movements. Maybe are more slow, 
different rhythms, but not really fast. That was my experience. So, mm. but yes, the breed is having the yeah, like the metric the of time. The metric of time. Yeah. yeah in in my, in my case, I feel this thing also has infinite space in water, and lim more limitation on land, and about time I feel more di li dilation or expansion of time in the water as if I lose track, like a dreamy state mm -hmm. that maybe it's one second or maybe it's 20 minutes. Um, it's sometimes confusing for me because the breath starts to expand. So maybe my rhythm of counting time is uh, changing in a way that affects my sensation of, of, of duration of my perception of, yeah, of duration of actions or non-actions. Mm -hmm. And in Aguajara, we always say, yeah, like the time is, is another dimension. So time and space are actually like different under the water. That's what I like to believe. No? You enter another world with another time frame. And see, I, I like to think about it like another thing, not being able to translate it to sensations in the land. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The biggest difference I feel um, around time and space on both like environments it's after the experience like during the dance in the water I feel kind of that I can set into like inner clock you know that this this connection with with myself is strong and I can kind of rely on it but this transition of going out of this experience bring me like stretch so much that I feel like happens much more than it happened and mm. like in both in space and time like I feel like I came back after like huge journey into like <laughs> cosmic lands <laughs> yeah and back again to this human body okay mm. yeah um I would like to know uh, what are your like visions or let's say your approach towards the practices in my own personal uh, path now i am sensing contact improvisation as a tool for relational practices to sensibilize and to create resilient bodies individual and collective bodies and in the water for me it's so easy to go to this relational body, no? as you say, I move in relation to uh, the water, to my breath, to other bodies. And one big investigation I have is how bodies can be more sensible and permeable, something about permeability and borders being more liquid. So this liquid state um, that I really believe is a tool for society <laughs> and community building. So I was wondering around this, if you have some visions or what drives you in both practices, no? Yeah, and to share them, like what, what is that impulse to share and what do I like, what do I like to bring in, in, in the groups which I share this? <laughs> well, also talking about the, what you say before uh, about the two biggest fears of the human the fall and the don't breathe well, I recognize myself <laughs> playing with the limit of both of course in contact I like the risk I like to find the limit of the possibilities and fall whatever and whatever um, and in the water also I, I'm kind of just keeping the breath and, and at, at the end it's like I need to <gasps> It's like, and sometimes I ask myself, hey, why you have to wait so long? You can just go a little bit before. But I like this pressure of going deep, and, but then I find another leg, and then I give this impulse, and okay, I'm going up, and then something is pulling me, ah, it's okay, a little bit more. And, and sometimes I is like, ah, oh, fuck, Sergio, come on, <laughs> make it easy. <laughs> so yes, I have the same impulse to play with the the limit and I connect that but I'm interested in in the especially in contact dance but also teaching acrobatics and 
you know, kind of disciplines that I love how the people is going out of their comfort area, comfort zone. And I think it's a very big value to, to learn that that you can manage yourself in this situation. You don't have to avoid. It's not that you have to you you need to go for it. But if this is happening, like in life, that you cannot control the situation, the point is, how can I learn to deal in this situation? How many tools I have? Because normally the mental limits are stronger than the real body limits, especially in, in acrobatics or in contact. That you say, no, no, I cannot do that. This is dangerous. This is make me be scary. And yes, of course. Mm. You, because if you are high and you are fast and you are falling, you, you need to be aware of what is happening. And yes, it's a risky situation. That's why I, I like to use the word risk more than fear, because fear is more an emotion. It's more a history, a memory. Mm. It's something more mental. The sensation is not. It's real. It's happening. You need the sensation of risk to manage the situation. If you don't feel the risk, Maybe it's better to don't try these risky things. That's how I teach, especially in acrobatics. It's not like someday you don't have fears and then you do flips forever. No, it's that you learn how to f make the flips. But you need this sensation. So this direct association of risk situation and fear, I like to break and to um, empower. Empower. Empower the your possibilities, find your possibilities, find your own limits, because I'm pretty sure that are far than what you think. And I think this is a beautiful thing to to share with people and can break big walls that then you apply in another areas of your life and can empower yourself to, hey, maybe I am more capable to deal with this situation that normally I want to avoid. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm. I love to be like super attentive and react in those like milliseconds in contact and even I in those moments I even don't feel risk because the risk is already when something already happened. You know, that, that was the moment of risk, but it happens. And before it's just this very attentive focus to the like momentary, those super like um, energetic, energetical movements with a lot of forces, which you uh, like observe uh, and you follow them uh, like those streams of energy that you cannot be anywhere else because it's the high speeds. Uh, activity even in sometimes in like kind of not so like in more slow motion but it also can has this like this attentiveness into the moment so it's 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 quite meditative practice that way and but the biggest like value which for me bring both of the practices is the trust like building a trust in a community uh, bringing people together and um, a little bit dissolution of of I of ego of like being egocentric it's more like towards building towards someone Mm, and what I discovered uh, in the water is really like this mothering feeling, this taking care of each other, mm, which we all hold this need. And in water, it just comes very gently that we support each other because of this. There is this risk of not having breath. Uh, and that helps to be together. Mm. Hola, Juliana. 
Yeah. We have a new mermaid here in the conversation. Bienvenida. Gracias. Um, I would like to mm, wrap up this uh, conversations around something Juliana mentioned in the closing of this whole two weeks of intensive workshops with, con with Sergio in contact improvisation, the immersion with water movements and contact and rituals in nature and then this post labbing and jamming space and I was touched by Juliana you saying that the first time you came to the festival like four or five years ago that something changed inside and you could not leave the lagoon in Bacalar <laughs> from Bacalar um, so yeah I just wonder uh, for all of you what does these spaces mean and if or not would you like to foment or to um, support this type of spaces uh, where we can both um, create knowledge together but also have a, a structure holding us you know like we have the space we have the resources to be here and um, yeah contextually in the world what would it mean you know to have more of these spaces yeah if you would like to share some of your experience and also you then bring what is your position around this yeah space holding mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i feel uh, super grateful that i could um, be guided into these spaces by people who are part of creating this structure that recognize the importance of this. Um, and I think it's a simultaneous recognition of the importance of this as a collective, as an individual, and the oneness of these two. Um, that in these spaces, we have the opportunity to release all formats that have um, been impregnated into us and many times imposed as well and to really be open for what is truly co-created by this state of presence of collective disposition to this and how it naturally generates what each one needs and um, surprisingly many times when I came I had no idea what to expect what I was about to live I had no idea this type of experience of reality was even possible <laughs> and I feel it came from this feeling of of trust that can be really felt in, in the heart and um, start to explore together and start to learn from um, from many dimensions and I feel that the, the touch really really uh, transmits a lot of what the knowledges and, 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 and curiosities each body carries beyond what we can even comprehend consciously and uh, when we meet in this state of, of awareness um, and willingness to be there together in these encounters all this porosity opens up to receive this and move it together and compose something to totally new and uh, after a, a contained gem I feel then you, the, the body lives transformed and starts receiving the outside and the other contexts in this with these new perspectives and dimensions as well. Uh, I felt a big change in the way I entered the water, I saw light, I saw plants, and that I also could appreciate the dance within every meeting and um, every collective. And um, I feel it's super important 
that uh, this this is being nurtured and finding the ways to generate the spaces within the context in which we are living um, to know that we can uh, really get a lot from from uh, embracing each other um, and leaving behind all kinds of uh, um, uh, possible this go beyond understanding what's happening there and just really receiving it and feeling it yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the importance of introducing those kind of practices, uh, contact improvisation or water dance, into building a communities. Like for me it's a huge value to set like life society, like the mm, groups living together around practices like that because it brings another level of communication, which is so important. And um, I live in quite inclusive, like a so group of like dancing community. Mm, but I see value in bringing it outside, just as a social practice and I can imagine myself holding space like that <laughs> Yes, I think it's beautiful, this kind of gatherings when we, depend of the festival, depend of the gathering, but maybe sometimes it's completely all is co-created, sometimes it's less, but still there are this feeling of that we are supporting the space, we are supporting each other. There are roles, of course. Mm. But it's so simple things that the people are. It's the sometimes in uh, in many festivals that you you have to do everything. You have to cook. You have to clean. You have to, and not for you. It's for the community, and you can organize the group many ways, make a schedule. But it's important that you're gonna be aware in all the different levels of this structure as the community needs so you are really aware um, in some kind of an horizontal relationship um, and if this is not useful in the in our culture in our societies now no that this completely hierarchy and I if I have money I pay and then I don't have to do these kind of things and someone is doing for me and then I can have all the time to spend in another thing um, but these different play with roles and be part of the group without hierarchy I think that for example the jam the concept of jam is super beautiful because in the jam there are not hierarchy it's just bodies there are not levels you say in contact improvisation because it's not about what you can do it's about what can you create with these bodies now that is the biggest skill that you need the listening and create something together so it doesn't matter about, it doesn't matter the diversity the experience what matters is the presence the attention the power of being there creating in this level that we were talking about more less rational, less structure, more about the present, the feeling, the sensation and, and the art. We are making art. 
even if it's just for me and for you in this moment and for anybody else and in, it's impossible to repeat but it's, it's art so I feel super powerful and uh, a strong heal, health heal process, un proceso sanador. Mm -hmm. <coughs> healing process, yeah. As a human, talking about me, about myself, but also as a group, as a way to organize, as a way to share. Um, I love when the teacher is cleaning the bathrooms, something <laughs> like that, no? It's, yeah. it's beautiful. But It's like different cells. There is n any cell more important than the other, but can be can be roles. But in this situation, we can play with these roles, with these quotidian needs that we have as a group. So I think it's a very, como un golpe de humildad, como se diría eso. Like a humble, humble kick. Humble kick in the ass. <laughs> yeah. Come back to the earth. <laughs> earth. We are all. Yeah, you're talking about earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's very interesting for me. Like uh, identifying structure uh, of food, um, cleaning, spaces taken care of, time, like earthy qualities. And the uh, water is the flow, the dreamy state, the presence, the fluidity and how to navigate between these two and I love what you say because it's making more fluidity in the earth mm -hmm. the hierarchy that we are used to as you say you do the uh, conditioned um, states that we're built into about roles and specialization mm -hmm. and then to liquefy these roles and then to mix them and then in the jam It's pre-linguistic expressions of being. So I believe it's also this humble kick in the ass of like bringing all the rolls with eagles into a shaker and you shake them and then bah, what comes out? What is it? So <laughs> this amphibious type of land into water, water into land, I believe it tr like permeates and all the all, all the layers of uh, of our selves and of the collective and of organizer of organizing me as an organizing of this uh, contact and flow festival but I'm also facilitating I'm also participating I'm also sometimes cleaning the shit where I see around so it's just like also seeing myself um, falling into this condition states that ah no my time I have to put it up more into I have to solve out the numbers of the um, Excel tables that I have instead of cleaning my plate, but it's like, but I want to clean. It's so much pleasurable now to clean my plate, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's it's really weird. Like ah, now I want to clean plates. I don't want to do numbers or like to have a <laughs> big responsibility just to be singing. Well, I'm cleaning my plate with the left hand now, my right hand, you know. <laughs> so it's like, it's really nice to sense this, like, yeah, like liquidity in the values and my aesthetics and my attraction towards relations you know i really like this idea of that we can decolonize with these practices our own ways of seeing life what is beautiful what is not what is pleasurable so to be constantly in the question of this what attracts me what repels me and this is constantly changing because if i decondition myself new things emerge and I can perceive differently or maybe more deep or less deep I don't know where to is it less or more but it's different colors yeah aha uh -huh. and I feel it in myself I consider myself amphibious no because I don't really sense my whole self in contact impro or in the water like I started more hardcore in both at kind of the same time a little bit more earlier the contact improvisation but the water was a strong thing so I was always fighting the structures on land with the water because I, I felt these hierarchies. And I also feel hierarchies in jams, even though we say they're inclusive. We were talking mm -hmm. exactly the last uh, conversation for the podcast about inclusion and how we come from these conditioned states into a jam with all these 
society stories into the jam and maybe I have a empowered uh, self of being able to see more on under the layers but newcomers and the majority of the people I, I sense in myself as well judging with the same uh, structures from my upbringing my where I come from from society and this overlapping uh, again of water and earth you know or like this two qualities of the flow and the limits and the rigidity of the mind I don't know how to say it but yeah I, I also like to um, sense these practices as inclusive and like kicking the the structure out of mm -hmm. the normal no disrupting a little bit yeah I don't know if you would like to say something more to yeah start to close ya nos fuimos al inglés adaptándonos bien cañón sí. pero mm -hmm. creo que también es parte de no it's also part of adapting and going for the efficiency and the flow mm -hmm. I think we find the language. Mm -hmm. I, um, I'd just like to share something in between what you just said now and Janaka and um, the other as well. That um, the first contact jam I went to was a jam that happened once a month. And it was uh, a free jam in a space that used to already hold space for artistic manifestations from um, indigenous cultures, some um, other also subversive urban collectives, and um, already a, a, a space hold that had this quality of uh, yeah kicking the structures in, in a way and. It by creating, the, the giving space to what's necessary, you know, and to other voices and practices that uh, are many times not, not heard or nurtured. And this jam was a free jam, and the first thing that the person, the people that held it would say was, uh, this is a practice for anyone who has a body, um, that um, that we come to relate to moving and to encountering through this and um, bring your your neighbor, your aunt, um, someone who's in a wheelchair, someone, all kinds of bodies and also like getting this, uh, making uh, making sure that this is way beyond just the, the, the people who are used to dance or, you know, uh, have some kind of format or also a relationship to a specific kinds of bodies that are, are sometimes more seen as um, holding these movements, no, or specific qualities. So really, I thought it was very powerful, and I feel this was very strong to be welcomed in this way, and to feel a very unique space of, of um, inclusivity. And I also uh, long for more and more spaces that are able to incorporate the the internal tools that the jam and the practice has for promoting this and also questioning how the structure can really create these bridges so this accessibility really makes people feel welcomed and invited in these spaces no coming from different backgrounds um, and i don't know that they were imagining wow uh, a, a contact jam between albaniles <laughs> Or uh, yeah. uh, construction uh, workers uh -huh, uh, dancing with you. all kinds of collectives and people that are together that uh, could live their relationships and in, in the body and in this level would be I think very precious yeah and powerful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to uh, release from these hierarchies and structures and and, and access the the autonomy and and self empowering property that all of us can. Um, can have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for next year, Contact and Flow 2023, we invite all the workers of Hero Cayucomaya. Uh -huh. <laughs> this year already uh -huh. happened a little bit. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, some cook from the kitchen and these two construction worker guys, they wanted to stay. And I wanted to have the tools also to bring them because they were willing to do so. But I did not continue that thread. But yeah, maybe next next edition we create some, yeah, like more welcoming possibilities for this to happen. Yeah. Yeah, I want to meet those bodies. <laughs> yeah, <me too. laughs> all this. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be amazing for a community to be like sustained in Bacalar of contact improvisation, you know. And I know there's a lot of dancing in the water happening, but not not much regularity. Uh, yeah, I wonder how we could support this to happen, you know, for in Bacalar to be a constant jam on earth and water, yeah, and more locals to come to this festival. Mm -hmm. That's the vision for next year, yeah, mm -hmm. or now, since not since today. Actually, there's a space that's open this next Friday <laughs> for a jam. Okay, we already <laughs> we could, uh, yeah. <laughs> start this. <laughs> Perfect. Mm. Okay, so we dance on Friday in Bacalar. Thank you so <laughs> much this conversation. I hope we have even more deep ones, but this was a very good one. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, Daniel. Gracias, Daniel. Yes, mm. yes.